All right, Aki, I'm Shalawam, Shalawam. It's the brother Yahweh Shapat coming at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Wahara Kakwadash. Double honors to my elders and apostles at Great Millstone who do teach and rule well in these scriptures. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, to the brothers that's on the highways and the byways, pushing this word out in truth and sincerity, risking your lives and your freedom to do so. So you are say Shalawam. Now, and this is going to be another quick lesson, Aki, I'm just on, you know, Stand on fire for this truth, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and and basically, man, I'm going to make it as quick and as to the point as I can through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Now, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. Now, the first scripture I want to get is, uh, I believe that's uh, Romans 12 and 11. So bear with me, Yaki and Baba Kasha. My sword want to kind of, you know, Take a little minute to load up. But it ain't no rush. You know, I'm going to get this lesson out. You know what I'm saying? Get it done. I'll write this out, man. Right on time. So, what's I looking for? I'm looking for Romans 12 and 11. It says, um, this is Romans 12 and 11. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Because we're involved in a business. We're dealing with Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah's money, man. So, you know, when you're dealing with somebody else's money, it's just like with anything. You you can't be, you got to be on point, man. You, you know, you have to be on, on fire about whatever you're doing. You know, the scriptures tell you, um, you know, whatever you do, do it with all thy might. You know, roughly paraphrasing that scripture. So that, it's just like that with this word, man, even much more so because this is high this is a, a a a very highly spiritual work that we're involved in, man. This this is heavy business, and and it's not nothing to be played with, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, just speaking for myself first and foremost, that's why I've been trying to up my input or my output as far as my lessons go. Not to say that I'm any damn body, man. You know, all this is through your Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, but I do it because I got people that's looking at me. I'm a teacher to somebody. Not saying that I'm on the elders or the apostles, the apostles or the other elder brothers level, but I'm on, you know, I'm a leader in my own order, man. And I, and I want to feed the flock, you know, as I've been a uh, set in position to do. So the only way you can feed the flock is if you're doing the work, man. You have to do the work. You have to push these videos out, man. No matter what the hell's going on, you know, the work got to get done. Sometimes you might have certain situations where, like, I'm kind of dealing with a situation where I'm either having to uh, buy data, you know, or I'm having to, uh, you know what I'm saying, go to somebody else's house and use their Wi-Fi. So, like, yeah, I can have to run in here with the kids right quick. I got them watching cartoons while I'm doing this. But, uh, yeah, man, so... You know, but regardless though, if you want to do this work, man, your how about Shin Yahushua will make a way, man. It is it's you know, he ain't gonna make it hard for you if he see that you trying to do the work, man. The Lord gonna provide a way. But just getting to the definition of fervent, you gotta be on fire, man. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what fervent means. It means, you know, being passionate or intense about something. This is the definition for fervent, having or displaying a passionate intensity, hot, burning, or glowing. And then I got another definition for fever. That's where you get the word fever from. You know, and we'll get the definition for fever. It says a state, because it's, you know, you got definitions one, and you got A and B, and you got definition two. Definition two is saying a state of heightened or intense emotion or activity. You know, so that means you intense about something. You intense, you hey, you you got a fever. You know, that's why they call it uh what they call it uh you know people say they got baby fever. They having a heightened or intense emotion about, you know, uh uh uh, uh having a baby, having a child. You know what I'm saying? You know, just just using that as an example, it says I can uh Definition B, it says a contagious, usually transient enthusiasm. And and we you we you want to have that type of attitude in the truth because you want to provoke the scriptures tell us to provoke one another unto good works, man. And how do you do that? You had you gotta be on fire. You gotta have a a, a, a script 
uh, uh, teaching fever. I say it like that, man. You want to be on fire for this truth so that you can rub off on other brothers, man, because iron sharpeneth iron. So that one brother, he might be falling short of, you know, whatever brother's going through. If he see you keeping up and, and keeping up the pace, that, that's going to rub, rub off on him. It's going to be contagious on him. You know, so I got a couple of scriptures I want to grab, man. You know, uh, nothing too. This ain't going to be too long. Lord willing, you know, you have watching y'all with witness is edifying, you know. The water to the Lord for, uh, you know, rest, putting the spirit on me, letting the spirit rest on me to do this lesson, man. You know, because it, it's all about, it's not all about your works, but your works are definitely taken into account, you know. And um, you want to, you know what I'm saying, you want to try and abound in the work of the Lord, man. You know, you don't want to just, it's cool, all right? You might have, you might be going through something. You like, you know what, damn, I just barely got my, I got my three videos out. You know what I'm saying? It might be like that sometimes, but if you got room to do more, you do more, man, because you're going to be rewarded according to your works. You know, this is 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, meaning don't let nothing come between you and this truth. You know, be a uh, be an immovable object, man. You know, it says uh, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is. Is not in vain in the Lord. Everything else you're doing, it's in vain, man. You know, and your works is how, that's part of how you're going to be saved, your faith and your works, but your works is part of it. Let me get uh, another scripture for that. No, this is 2nd Ezra. Let's see. Uh, um, this is 2nd Ezra 9 and 8. I mean, nine and seven, and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed. So it's your faith and your works, but they go hand in hand, man. You know, <clears throat> I got uh, something else I want to bring out. I believe that's in second answers as well. I believe it's the 16th chapter, though. Let's see. Uh, second answers 16 and... No, because when you even when you laboring right now, you laboring in vain because this place is going to get this place is going to be destroyed regardless. And the Heavenly Father's already cutting back work anyways. Even if some people get to go back to work, it's not going to be the same. The Heavenly Father really has started leaving everlasting impressions that he intended to make on this place from the beginning. He started to do that now, man. And to hell with this place, man. No, by all means, I'm not telling brothers not to work because, hey, you don't work, you don't eat. And if you if you are really if you really a man of the Lord, you like to work, you know, if the Lord permits you to do so, if time permits itself. But you don't give your all into this place because this place is going to be destroyed, man. And you laboring in vain anyway. You know, this is second Ezra 16 and 45. And therefore, they that labor, labor in vain. As a matter of fact, I can just approve the whole point. So lucky I'll go ahead and start at verse 41. This second Ezra 16 and 41. He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away, and he that buyeth as one that will lose. You know, certain brothers involved in stocks and different things, when I hear them brothers speak on it, they not fucking uh, uh, going to cry if they lose that shit. They just using this world as not abusing this world. And this basically what this scripture is telling you to be in that type of a spirit, man. These certain verses in, the, in this chapter. You know, it says, he that occupieth merchandise as he that hath no profit by it, and he that buildeth as he that shall not dwell therein. He that soweth, soweth as if he should not reap, so also he that planteth the vineyard as he that shall not gather the grapes. The, they that marry as, that, as they that shall not, as they that shall get no children, and they that marry not as the widowers. And therefore, they that labor, labor in vain. So when you're working for this society, as far as your work for Esau, that shit's in vain. But your labor for Yahweh Bashan Yahweh Shah is not in vain. You know, I'll go back to that, man. First Corinthians uh, 15, and I believe it was 58, if I'm not mistaken. Con. Again, First Corinthians 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So this thing, we're not doing this for nothing. 
there's a reward for our labor, man. We're not doing this work in vain. You know what I'm saying? You know? Let's see. Uh, I had um, some other precepts I wanted to bring up. You know, hey, and, and then you want to stay on fire because the Heavenly Father not dealing with nobody that's, uh, you know, fucking lukewarm, man. So you want to you want to stay on fire. You want to be fervent. You know what I'm saying? You know, you want to have a, a, a speaking fever, man, uh, a, a prophesying fever. The scriptures tell you uh, uh, covet to prophesy. You know, this is Revelations 3 and 15. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot. Because you either on fire for the truth, and that's what's scary about being involved in this work, man. You either on fire for the truth or you cold. You know what I'm saying? You might have them times where you fall, but you still got to do the work even then, you know? And, 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 you know, those times that you fall, that's supposed to make you and ain't supposed to break you. It's supposed to make you go harder, man. So you got to be on fire, man, because it ain't no in-between with Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shah. He not one of them guys, man, and he don't deal with the wishy-washy. You either are one of his or you're not. You're doing this thing and fully involved or you're not involved at all. Speaking for myself, first and foremost, man. You know, it says, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You know, so when Elder Apostle Hart put out a decree, you're going to either get down with what he said and lay down, man. Because ultimately, that's your how about some y'all was shot putting that on the spirit on that man, you know, on, on the apostle to, to, to put that decree out. And that becomes law after he says that, man, you know, and, and you want to you want to adhere to that. You know what I'm saying? It's not just this dude three videos. That's like, you know, and I'm not coming down on brothers who sometimes you have stuff happen. Stuff does happen. And you just get three videos out, but you should aim high. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and that being said, that's like the grading system in Esau's bullshit school system. You know, where he tell you, well, you you did a get to get a D is passing. Elder Apostle Hart said basically okay three men three video a week minimum so you know if you just trying to get three videos a week out i'm not saying nothing wrong with that you know if you getting them done that's cool but you should always aim higher man especially in the times that we in now because it's always something to talk about and the scriptures tell you to abound in the work of the other lord man you know you, you just you you, you want to aim higher man even if you get four or five out, you want to go above the minimum. You don't want to just do the minimum. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, you know, you're going to get rewarded according to your work. So if you want, you know, you want a bigger blessing from your house shy when he come, man, you got to do accordingly, man. And, and hey, if, if you ask the Lord to help you in whatever you falling short in, all you got to do is pray, and he'll, he'll add that to you. You know, but that's just like, okay, Hey, your parent mad at you, man, because you come home with a damn D or a C and they know that you can do better. Well, the Lord going, hey, the Yahweh Bashi Yahweh Shah might see that you only doing three videos a week. He know you can do better. He going to put that on your spirit like, hey, you can do more, man. And you you going to either do more or that's going to be an issue between you and the Lord, man. You know, but like I said, I, I'm not coming down on brothers for, for doing just three videos a week. I'm just making a point. You know, you want to aim higher, man. You know what I'm saying? You want to aim high. Because Yahweh Shah is going to reward you according to your works. You know, this is Revelations 22 and 12. And behold, I come completely and reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. So you're going to get, it's not nothing wrong to just getting three videos done a week. But you're going to get rewarded according to that. So if you want a bigger blessing, if you want a greater reward, you're going to do more, you know? And that's just me. I'm just making this point, man, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. You know, I'm going to end it off there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Yahweh Again, double honors to my elders and apostles at Great Millstone who do teach and rule well in these scriptures. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Until next time, I say Shalom.